What's up guys, Leg Day here to ask and potentially answer one question. Is 2020 the year of the Houston Outlaws? I think it's fair to say that the Houston Outlaws have had a slightly disappointing run in the Overwatch League so far, not making it into the top half or the playoffs in the inaugural season and languishing in 16th place at the end of Season 2. So in this offseason, they had to make a few changes to try and turn their fortunes around. The first change that's been made is bringing in new head coach and man who really wants to know more about how gluten-free has changed your life, Harsha Bandy. Harsha previously has experience on both the Vancouver Titans and San Francisco Shock. It's going to be his first appointment as a head coach, but he has a lot of expertise with high-tier teams that have both Western and Korean players, which is the direction that the Outlaws are currently heading in, as they've recently recruited both Mecco and Rappel. And it's worth noting that Rappel did come from the Vancouver Titans alongside Harsha, so the two have previous history, and it's going to be a very good coach-player relationship right there. I think it's a good play here by management to keep a lot of the pieces, which made Houston that was very marketable within the team, and change the backroom direction instead to try and make those pieces far more effective in positions that they are. You're making Jake, you're making Moomy, you're making Rolkus, these big money-making personalities into better players by giving them a backroom that may be more tailored to their strengths and can really direct the team in a much better way. I think this is a hugely beneficial business decision which is going to also help now that Houston Outlaws actually have an owner, so these guys are actually going to have some money, there's going to be a little bit less stress, and that's going to mean that it's much easier for players to focus on the game instead of on, their, on the sort of realities of their career. Harsha will also have another assistant coach to help him out in the form of Dream, formerly of both British Hurricane and Montreal Rebellion. Dream's likely going to be bringing a lot of strategic depth and another viewpoint to this team, which is super important when you're looking into new metas and you want to try and think about all the possibilities and all the way that your particular team and your particular skill set can move through. And I think that also being able to coach players one-on-one -on -one in an environment where travel is so stressful is going to be one of the big plays that teams can make just to have more support for all of these players so that they don't get burnt out in ridiculously long travel periods. Okay, we've talked back room, but let's talk about front line. Mecco, Korean superstar, NYXL off-tank, formerly has joined the Houston Outlaws, one of their two new Korean additions. Mecco is going to be a huge boon to the Houston Outlaws. They already have two off-tanks in the form of both Spree and Coolmat, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those moves over to a coaching position to free up a roster spot, because currently... Outlaws are sitting at 12, and I think that Mecco is going to be in basically all of the time. He's going to be doing a lot to help Mooma get exactly what he wants from that main tank role, create a lot of space, and create a lot of safety for Mooma to make the plays that he is known for. Joining Mecco when it comes to the influx of talent for the Houston Outlaws, we have both Blase and Hydration coming from the Boston Uprising and LA Gladiators, respectively. From the outside, these two can look like a very similarly skilled pickup, both of them have very good Doom Fists, and Hydration is known to be one of the best Farahs in the world as well. I think he's really going to patch over a lot of DPS weaknesses that the Outlaws had previously. I would not be surprised to see Hydration starting as a DPS, but also, Hydration's a really good off-tank as well. So it could be that they allow him to play as a sort of roamer, and they've brought in Hydration to try and deal preemptively with problems of potential players getting exhausted over the course of the next season with the travel that they've got to do. They could just bring along Hydration like, okay, one of our DPS is out, you go in for DPS. One of our off tanks is out, you go in for off tank. Or even Moomer's ill. So you've got to go in and play main tank, play the Winston, play the Wrecking Ball, and they alter their strategies around that. I think Hydration is very valuable in that sense, but Blase as a pickup does bring up some question marks for me because he does overlap quite a lot with Hydration. There have been rumors circulating that one of the five DPS of the Outlaws is going to either swap to another role or is going to be acquired by another team, so maybe it won't look as overlapping when we figure out what the entire picture is for the Houston Outlaws. When we look at the other acquisition that the Houston Outlaws have made, we've got to look at the curious case of the Houston Outlaws' backline. Currently, they have both Raucous and Repel, and only a single main support in Boink after having dropped Barney earlier in the offseason, and I think main support may well be where we find Houston Outlaws to be weakest in 2020. They're currently at the 12-man roster cap, which means they can't really bring in a more uh, experienced main support, I would say. But there is a potential that in future matters we'll be looking at what we would classically consider two flex supports, where both Raucous and Repel could be part of the roster. And then maybe if Raucous is calling on that backline, may mean that he is 
very difficult to sub out and that they could have Repel play that sort of foam main support role instead. I think that might make sense for them. But at the same time, why would you bring in Repel if you didn't want to use his considerable skill set with those flex supports? Maybe just to alleviate some pressure on Raucus when it comes to not having to play every game and travel to every destination. When it comes to this main support problem, it could be an unorthodox way to try and solve it. One of your most powerful callers in the team in Jake, who is a significant leader in the Houston Outlaws, could be moved over into that main support role to make sure that he's the one playing the Lucio or the Mercy, who has the oversight of the entire team and tries to keep them on a single track mind and keep them on strategy all the time. This could be one of the plays that Outlaws make if you want to try and diversify in the main support role without actually shedding any of the weight they currently have. Because like we said before, can't recruit anyone new until you drop somebody because you're at the maximum of a 12-man roster. Finally, when it comes to looking at the Outlaws' current roster, it's quite surprising that with 5 DPS, we don't really have a superstar hit scan who can really consistently hold their weight. Linksa can be a good counter widow maker, but I don't think his bog standard hit scan is really enough to consider that starter spot as a DPS. And when you've got five of these guys, I think you may need to drop one or trade one in order to make room for an actual consistent hit scan. You could get Asking from EU with no buyout. You could get Only God from EU potentially with no buyout. You could maybe trade for Baby Bay from Atlanta Rain, who's now consider. He's having to consider, but he has to compete with Edison for that starting spot as well, so he could be on the market. I think any of these three would be good pickups for Outlaws when it comes to filling that hit scan DPS spot to make sure they've always got that ability to go over to a consistent DPS on a McCree if the meta demands that. However, despite my reservations in some areas, I want to go back to that question I posed at the beginning of the video. Is 2020 going to be the year of the Outlaws? And even if they don't win the league, if they don't have that in them, I think the answer could be yes. As we move over to a homestand model, it's going to be all about marketability, penetrating those markets, and Outlaws are doing a fantastic job in being able to do that. They've kept their marketable players, and they're going to be improving their performance by giving them a new direction from a backline, while improving the performance of the team overall by plastering over some cracks, by bringing in people like Hydration, like Mecha, like Repel, who can bring up the overall performance of a team. So when it comes to actually winning as both a team, a business, and a part of a league that's focusing more and more on home stands and home stadiums, I think 2020 is definitely going to be a year for the Houston Outlaws to remember and to lead a lot of other teams in what it means to be a successful Overwatch League team. They've brought in head coach and man who looks at the middle distance for where you wish your significant other looked at you, Arsha Bandy. New head coach and only man in history to wear a lanyard sexily, Arsha Bandy. New head coach and man whose hand smells really good today, Arsha Bandy. New head coach and man whose smile launched a thousand ships, Arsha Bandy.